back to another video of ours. We've got the FAI Cup review show. Delighted to be welcomed by Sean, Lean, and JP Fahey. Boys, what's the crack? Oh, good. We're good, good yeah. Um, we'll start off as well as JP with Derry City and Cork. Uh, I've seen the highlights for this. You were at the game. You just see to get your thoughts on it. Uh, we had a red card, we had a penalty, etc. etc. Uh, Derry Truths are the next round. They'll be delighted. Cork. Won't be too bothered, let's be honest about it. But uh, overall thoughts on the game, first of all. It wasn't a great game, to be honest. Um, it was quite lethargic. Um, it was... You just got the feel that Cork were coming up. You say we weren't really bothered, but they, they won or lost. I think the lineup probably proved that a wee bit. They, yeah. they, uh, Louis Britton on the bench and... I don't think they had their number one goalkeeper in that Tyler. So um we kinda probably half expected it to be to be honest. Um from a dairy point of view it was just about making sure that they got the job done. Um kill get missed the, the second goal. Um because it it's been a problem in, in recent weeks is that they haven't managed to, to get a second goal and kill teams off and now. Um started Cork started okay they did the first shot of the game, I think, was probably the only shot they had the, the entire night, to be honest. I was only saying my heart had a mate, really. Um, and then the whole night, the minutes. Um, they get a penalty quite uh, quite early on, and um, group over the top of McLennie, Ryan Graydon runs on it. Um, keep, you just knew that... Uh, when There's no argument, was, coming, was there? You just knew when the keeper was coming that it was going to be a foul, well, it was going to be in the box, it was going to be hard, I think. Thought it was a good bit of refereeing from the referee, who I think was very, very questionable um, the, the whole night. Um, it was a good bit of refereeing from him. Um, they allow the ball, they roll, they see where it went down the net, and then he, he's awarded the penalty, which I thought was good refereeing. Um, Derry hit the post as well through Michael Duffy, had a couple of half chances. Could have went down 2 0 up. They've come out in the second half, started okay, um, and then Cork were down to 10 men. Nobody, I don't think, actually actually saw the incident. They just heard the referee blowing his, his whistle and going to his back pocket. And nobody at that stage was sure whether it was a, a Cork red card or a Mark Conley red card until the, we saw that the, the Cork player was pleading with the referee. I've watched the, the, the replay a few times and I still can't see... Get, I still don't see it was if it was a stamp, I don't see it being a deliberate stamp, to be honest with you. I don't see anything personally, I don't see anything malicious there from what I could see. I think it's more of a case of Keaton stumbling. Yeah. And trying to regain his button somewhere. And if he has caught Conley, it, it's probably accidental. Um, but as I say, in my opinion. The He's been unlucky, JP, team. to be honest, because he was sent off earlier in the season against Galway, and I thought it was very harsh to say the least as well. So, and a possibility, a you wonder. I don't know. Possibility was a reputation, maybe. I don't know, because it, it was a first division referee that we had as well. Mm. So, was it the same referee that sent them off that night? Nobody knows. Well, someday will know, but I, I don't know. Um, and, um, yeah. There, for that point on, it was just about keeping it tight at the back and making sure we got the second goal. And we did that through Saturday Day Alley. Good ball in the box by Dummigan, defender headed it clear, and Day was there. They, they uh, put it in the back of net. And yeah. I think from that point forward, then both teams, the game was up basically. Derry was just pushing. I think Michael Duffy was pushing, trying to get himself on the score sheet. You can see that he's desperate for a goal. And um, he played really well again. Um, um, it's good to see him back, back fit, and you're looking throughout the squad that there's, I think the only one that we're missing through injury is, is um Jackie, and we know that's a, a season ender. So, um, we've got a good squad there, and it, it it'll all depend now on, on the draw, um, and the in the next round that gets a home advantage is key, um, to the to the the FA Cup like uh, obviously you can get in the way tie, but. Everybody wants a home tie because everybody will fit, uh, fancy their chances against any team at home. Yeah, the next round is going to get tricky. That draw is Tuesday, in case anyone yeah. is watching and doesn't know. This is Monday we're doing this. Uh, Sean, move on to you. I'll actually move on to Galway and UCD. Finish Galway 2, UCD 3. 
Uh, Mikey Rowe, Hemmings for Galway, Tommy Lonergan, who's really stepping up to the plate recently for UCD. He's only 18. He was actually a Pats and uh, he's out at UCD. So he's doing well there now. And Duffy uh, with the goals for UCD. I suppose my question here in this game is, uh, does this kind of show that, you know what I mean, that first division teams <laughs> still have a long way to go? You know what I mean? There is a gap still with the Premier Division teams. I'm not saying there's a gap with UCD, but my point is UCD are bottom of the league in the Premier and Galway's lost a home to them. So, you know, the likes of Galway, if if they were to get promoted, would still have to do a lot of right recruitment, I think. And I suppose this result is a little bit of, it points towards that a wee bit, does it, John? Um, I think a little bit, yeah. I wouldn't say majorly, because I think if Galway really went for it, and if Galway had a good day, they probably could have beaten UCD. But mm. um, I think it's sort of, emblematic of the problems that Galway are going through at the moment or maybe lack of a yeah. from it. Because UCD took the lead twice before they eventually won the game. And the, um, even then, the goal that ultimately gave UCD the win was a, a bit of a howler for Matt Connor, which I think is uncharacteristic for him. You know, he was down here. And, I mean, he was always reliable on goal. Like, you know, it certainly wouldn't make that kind of a mistake. Mm. Um, I think, uh, yeah, but... Uh, UCD, I mean, they're always a dangerous team. I know about that myself. Um, but uh, I, I think I think there is a step up. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about it in a minute, I assume. But um, I'd still be wary of getting any, even the weaker uh, Premier Division teams are still a good bit ahead of the stronger First Division teams. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, UCD, from their point of view, it's a very good result for them. It puts them into the quarterfinals. And, Sean, you might argue that... Um, you know, it's it's definitely getting stronger now. Like, you know what I mean? Most of the weaker teams, let's say, are out. And a lot of people might fancy their chances against UCD or be looking to get them in the draw and avoid others, obviously. But UCD, obviously, will, uh, you know, they relish that in many ways as well. Yeah, they're always, um, I mean, you know, you always think, you, they're always a team that on paper you look at them and you know you might not know much about them and say oh we can beat them but they always give you a game and uh, you know you know about it when you're halfway through a game you know you're, you've you moved on to your fingertips because your nails have been chewed off and stuff like that exactly we move on to Luke and, and Bowes that's obviously at Dailyman Park uh, Bowes won by two goals nil. Burt 32 Afalabi on 35 and I was there for this one but uh, it's funny we were speaking uh, in the WhatsApp group and in various other areas said there's a big gap between the league clubs and the non-league clubs and it's there to be seen it is huge um, but I think Bohemians were probably the least impressive of the league clubs against the non-league clubs in the first couple of rounds that said uh Lemonovic made some really good saves in this match for Luke, and especially in that second half to keep it to um, up to that point where Bort scored. There was a real sense of nervousness, let's say, around Daniel and Park. And there was, yeah, you could really feel it. Like um, they did have chances before that, though. It was either Bort or Wilson missed the sitter. I'm not sure. The ball came into the box, and one of them took the shot. I can't remember which one it was, and actually hit off one of the players that was going in. So it was either Bert hit it off Wilson or either or Wilson was actually Bo's best player in the night, by the way. Some really good crosses into the box. And uh, not often de- not often capitalized, but uh, he did set up Afalabi for his goal in 35. And once Bert scored, I felt like they were going to get another one quickly and they did. But at that point I thought this could be five, six, seven. So Lucan from their point of view would be absolutely delighted that in the second half they basically didn't concede, to be honest. And Bowles will be a little bit disappointed that they couldn't add to their tally. But at the same time, they get through the next round and job done. But I've seen Bowles a lot in the last few weeks, the way it's worked out. Like, you know, I've seen them, I think, three times in 10 days or something like that. And it's it's just not clicking still for me. I've talked about how they have a lot of new players. It still doesn't feel right for me. Probably be Pats tonight now, you know yourself, but uh, <laughs> it it doesn't feel right looking at it like and uh, the actors in the next round, um, that's all they can do, really. I suppose JP, isn't it? I like in similar to the dairy in the, the previous round, you, you get all of it going Celtic and you, you're just thinking, just get the job done, like never um forget about banana skins because we have seen down through the years that non-league teams have come and, and they've provided upsets and I, I know way back in the late 80s early 90s Derry were on the wrong end of a few of them yeah. and, and 
I know there was quite a bit of a discussion on social media and in, in our group over the weekend about, about the gap between the the, the amateur teams and, and the, or the non-league teams and the, the league teams because there are some teams that are in the uh, League of Ireland that, that are that are probably amateur, but um, the, the gap is there. Um, it, and I agree with the person that brought it up. I do you think that the gap should be smaller? Um, but I think the onus on that is not on the League of Ireland, it's on the FAI. Yeah. And to try and reduce that gap. And um, for Bowes, like a 2-0 one is a, a one is a one in cup football. It doesn't matter, does doesn't matter how you get it. Um, the main thing is is getting it and keeping yourself in the hat in the next round and be bitterly disappointed after last year's final defeat and they'll be looking to go one better this year. Um and the main thing for them was, was they got they got the win, but you touched on it there, there was a bit of a nervous nervousness around the ground at no no and that's probably coming from lack of confidence. Um like or you could see like over the course of the season where bowls would maybe be on top and then all of a sudden they find themselves one 0 down and it, it it's a lot I think it's a lack of confidence from the supporters that, that the players can can um, get themselves out of trouble. Mind they were never in trouble in this game, but um, always there's always a first goal. It was, I was saying branded off Friday night. As soon as Derry got the first goal, um, you just felt that Cork were never really going to come on it. And the Bulls fans were probably the same mm. in this game. But once they got the first goal, they knew that look, and we're we're never going to come back and date. And um, to get the second one really quickly, then would it would have put everybody at ease. Um, because as we know, these non-league teams down through the years, if they're still in the first half of the chance, they can cause you problems later in games. Yeah, absolutely. I must add as well, Sean, that Luke can actually hit the post. I'd say inside the first minute at some point, and he. It was just funny, the real hush around Daly when Park was like, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? They picked the ball. But after that, there was like, there was nothing else really from Luke. And finished Wexford 2, Dunlop 3, and this was a mad game. This is the closest we got to a shock or a surprise or whatever you want to call it. And uh, Wexford, fair play to them. Uh, Macmillan gave Dundalk the lead after 39. Lovage he plays after 56. Short gave them the lead after 66, and it was a short lead because Dundalk he plays in 73 to Rhino Kane. Sorry. Uh, Dundalk then won an extra time to Robbie Benson. He scored a penalty in 110 minutes. But uh, Wexford, like, first of all, they can hold their heads high, but they can. They were damn unlucky not to get at least bring Dundalk to penalties here, I have to say. I mean, Dundalk, the goals, you have to give Wexford credit here because Ian Ryan obviously saw their weaknesses as well. And uh, the goals they got were essentially balls over the top, Sean, where Wexford just got through and uh, Lovage scored, as I said. Dundalk tried to play offside right in the half of the nine, pretty much like, you know, in their own half, obviously. And then short scores as well. And even after Macmillan scored, there was a chance for Wexford from tip off. Uh, I don't know why the line is so high from tip off. It's bizarre in many ways, isn't it? But um, obvious weaknesses there for Sean, for Dundalk. A little bit of worry for Dundalk going forward. They'll be delighted they got through. Wexford, very unlucky though. Yeah, I think so. I think um, it. I, I try to avoid being too negative from Dundalk's perspective for this, just because I thought Wexford did play well and they were good value. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it is a thing that Stephen O'Donnell have to look at. You know, you don't want... You, you might get away with it against the first division team, but if you get a Premier Division team, they're going to be watching this. They're going to be, you know, thinking about this uh, ball over the top stuff. That, um, you know, if you, if you have a good striker, uh, you know, you'll get a lot of joy out of it. Um. I thought I'd have worries about would they adapt to it though because there was plenty of opportunities for them to adapt to it during the course of the game they just didn't. Mm. You mentioned there even after McMillan equalised, Wexford still had Wexford still had a lot of good chances uh, to make it three two to themselves. Um, uh, I thought yeah I, th I thought it was um, you always kind of favour the bigger team when it goes to extra mm -hmm. time and penalties yeah. just to, to kick in, but. Um, I wasn't I wasn't entirely convinced that Dundalk would get the job done and I was a little bit disappointed even if it just means that you know oh, we'd have a better chance against Wexford or something but I suppose it is as it is 
Yeah, JP, I mean, the doctor will be just happy to get through, to be honest. Uh, tricky game. Wexford doing very well lately, even in the league. It's one defeat and 11 in the league. You know, they can score goals. But uh, we've talked about this with Dundalk. I know we keep talking about it, but I mean, the problem is still persistent, isn't it? That, that high line and the way they're playing and the type of players they have while they're pr- trying to play that high line. If Wexford can take advantage of it as well, like there's Premier Division teams that I just think, I'm not sure if Adal... I think he might be a bit too stubborn to actually change that because I've seen him do the pots and regardless of the personnel, even with injuries, he still kind of play with that. Shows Connolly's organisational, uh, let's say, abilities. You know, it's no coincidence with him gone that they seem to be a bit all over the shop as well, was it? Yeah, um, because they certainly weren't passing up them opportunities in the Premier Division. Mm. Um, we played them a few weeks ago in Oriel Park and I don't think we... We try to play on that enough, um, especially in the second half. We kind of drop, dropped in and, and try to hold what we have. And yeah, there was numerous opportunities that we had to get the ball over the top because we certainly had the pace. Um, and the, the final 20 minutes, they, they explored it and we never did. And what, watching the highlights in this game, Wexford, if you're a player or you're part of the coaching staff at Wexford, you're, you're, you're watching the back and you're, you're probably watching it with a bit of pride in how you've yeah. taken taken um, Dundalk on but you're also watching it with a bit of regret and thinking if dad had gone in or dad had gone in um, make, make no bones about it if it wasn't for Nathan Shepard that game wouldn't even have went the extra time um, yeah, it's a great save actually didn't he JP he saved it he's starting positions as well at times it was on the edge of the if not the edge of the 18 yard line, it was on the edge of the D, and that that allowed him to get the ball before before the striker. But I think it was was it the equaliser. Yeah. Uh, Lewis McCarry tried to play offside on the halfway line, and he knew fine rightly that Jamal was enough. He knew that he played him on. Yeah. But he he stopped and he held his hand up, hoping that the linesman would buy it. That's a cop out. Yeah. Fair play to the linesman in that situation because it's easy. It's easy to get caught out and. Especially when it's um, especially when it's the underdog that's going through, it's easy for the official they then start doubting himself and put his flag up. But it was a great bit of officiating, and Wexford played at a whistle and then they scored. And like Dundalk, they they probably took the lead against the run of play. To be honest with you, per it was Wexford to be disappointed with the, the defending for that. They didn't stop the run. They didn't stop the cross. And when the ball went in, they didn't get enough bodies around the. And it was, it was Rick, I think he scored from a tight angle after the keeper making a save. So mm. there was numerous opportunities to prevent it. And then, but fair play to them, they didn't fold. They went and they, they took a game they done dog and could have very easily went in at half time on level there. But they were so disappointed in the equaliser they conceded as well because they just allow Ryan O'Kane Kane to run and nobody gets near him and take nothing away from the kid. It's a good, it's a good finish. But look, uh, we don't think we've had an upset in the cup this year yet, and that that was the closest closest of with common. Um, Dundalk will no doubt be been will know that they've they've been let off the hook in this one, and they they'll not want to pass up them opportunities in a league game because you pass them up pass them opportunities in the league game, they're going to get punished. Yeah, pace will kill them. We're getting to the stage of competition where there nearly won't be any more shocks because there nearly can't be in many yeah. ways. Bonaghy United nil, Shelburne four. Um, they took their time here, Shelburne. It was uh, nil nil going into going into half time, and uh, Gorigi gave them the lead in forty five. Uh, Carr got two goals the second half, and Moylan a uh, bit of a mix side that Shelburne had out in this one. But uh, I heard from talking to various people that Bonaghy really like park the double back decker bus type job and you know you try different things let's be honest you do try different things but problem is when you do that that's fine but when the first goal goes in then you know it usually opens so that's what happened clearly here i think and shells managed to score three goals in the second half i suppose sean that shells into the quarterfinals and uh you know we're getting past the stage where you're more or less getting what you would call a favorable draw do you know what I mean? We're getting past that stage, in my opinion. There's not too many available like that, and there's no non-league teams in the next round. But uh, shells for you, um, bit of a dark horse, you think, for this cup? Uh, I don't think so. No, <laughs> just like that. No, sorry, Shelburne fans, you're not winning the cup. There you go. <laughs> no, well, 
Well, look, I suppose, uh, in all honesty, I suppose once you get to the quarterfinals, they say once you get to the quarterfinals in any competition, you have a chance of winning it. Yeah. But um, uh, just recent performances, um, you know, you can grind out a draw, and I suppose you might get the penalties in the cup or something. But if you're talking about winning it outright, you know, you're going to have to have a lot of luck on your side if you want to do yeah. that. So, um, you know, I just don't. And if I don't see them winning the cup now after that, they're probably going to win the cup. So uh, I'll be prepared to eat humble pie in November. But um, if you want my opinion now, I just don't I don't think they have enough to beat the big teams that you're going to have to beat to win the cup. You would think so, wouldn't you? JP, finish Minute, nil, uh, University Town, nil, sorry, uh, Treaty United, three, uh, Curran and the Curran on 32. Uh, it's been scoring goals this season for Treaty. Armstrong, 73, Malloy in 83. Uh, yeah, I suppose job done for Treaty again. And it's just that gap again between the league teams and the non-league teams. And obviously Treaty are a part-time side as well. So uh, and, like, there's a gap there as well. But good win for Treaty. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see who they get in the next round. I, um, like, as I said already, about Bulls playing a non-league team. Shelburne as well. It's just about getting the job done, getting the, the first goal. Um, because these non-league teams, you, they get the first goal against you, they they can make it really difficult because they do anyway. Um, they a certain point. Um, but I think it's been the the same throughout the the FA Cup. But once the the League Ireland team gets the first goal, the floodgates open, and um, uh, that's I know there was quite a distance between the first and second goal, but. They eventually went on. They they won the game three 0 as the probably the team started to tire, etc. Um and the the treaty will be delighted because they're they're still in the cup. It gives them it gives them a wee bit of focus from from, from the league as well because like, they came into the league last year and put in a really good performance, got getting into the, the playoff and they they be they be delighted that they're in the quarter final. The the likes of treaty and UCD and all now will be. Potentially, maybe looking and thinking, can we get one of those teams? Like, they'd be looking, can we avoid one of the big three, top three? Well, like, it's because at the point now where you win the quarter final, then you potentially end make a money spinner in the semi final. So, um, yeah, good, decent one for, for Treaty away as well, which is not easy. And, um, and the current scoring goals again in the FAI Cup. <laughs> Uh, Sean, you were at Malahide, uh, Malahide nil, Waterford FC six. Now, this was a big gap, and Griffin scored early. And see, this is it as well. The same with Shelburne scored in 45. Griffin scores in seven. So now the floodgates can open, I think. You know what I mean? And it does. Either we were after nine. Wazim with two, uh, Patterson and Power. Wazim has scored four goals for Waterford, and he scored a double each time. Cove, Pats, and Malahide, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, you were at this game. Uh, I'm guessing you saw a major gap in quality here, Sean. Yeah, there was. I mean, um, there was like a doubt for about a minute because we started a bit slowly, but once the first ball <laughs> did, uh, only got wider. Uh, I think I think there was a, a, a bit of suspect goalkeeping. I think you know, we kind of flattered ourselves a bit, but at the same time, I think Malahide would have gotten on better against a side that uh, went a bit more route one because that seemed like what they were set up to do when. We passed the ball around, moved it around quickly, and uh, you know the gap really showed. Uh, ran right the first half, then. Uh, I mean, it's hard to think about it the match really. I mean, there was lots of great play. Uh, Talk to front four: Patterson, uh, Ido Junior, and uh, Wasim. Uh, they were all really good, and um, you know, I mean, it's hard to say too much about the defense. Like they didn't have a great deal to do, but you know. Uh, that, that was fine as well. In the second half, I thought we slowed up a bit. Uh, the, the, there were still chances we had now, but um, they kind of they just came about. We weren't trying to force the chances or anything like that. But I got the feeling as well that uh, what uh, what Danny Sir probably told players to do was to just you know take it easy, don't get suspended, don't get injured. And from that perspective, you know that was a success. So. We're happy. We're into the quarterfinals, and you know it was a comprehensive win. It was it was enjoyable now, and um, so uh, really can't have any complaints, uh, you know. So just happy to be in the quarterfinals. And, yeah, I don't think anyone will particularly get any joy of playing Waterford, drawing Waterford or the RSC either, because on their day they're uh, 
as good as a lot of Premier Division sides. You'd argue, compared to Cork and Galway, they've more recent Premier Division experience as well in their team. So that's an interesting facet for Waterford. But yeah, great result for Waterford. We'll finish up with Drotted and Shamrock Rovers. Finish Drotted at one, uh, Shamrock Rovers two after extra time. Uh, Sean Gannon gave Rovers an early lead. Williams equalised with a typical goal poachers, Dean Williams-style goal in 60 minutes and Lions an extra time. With a great finish, uh, eight goals and six assists, by the way, for Lions this season, which is just incredible, to be honest with you. It's brilliant, it really is. He's been a revelation for them. Uh, first half, though, Gannon scores early. And to be fair, Rovers came out like an absolute train. They really came out with a mission, you know, and uh, you could see it in the first couple of minutes. And uh, they'd be disappointed with the goal. They actually could see the draw. There was a good save by McCabe. But after that, the reaction wasn't the best. And Gaffney was able to play it across to Gannon, who saw it home. But I think in the first half, Rovers would have been a little disappointed that they went two or three up. And I was just thinking at halftime, it's one nil here to Rovers. Like, you know, and you're kind of thinking, still in the game, Drada. Rory Gaffney missed a bit of a sitter, to be honest. I mean, the ball is planted there for him and he just plays it over the bar. He could have had another touch and drew the keeper out, actually, before he scored. McKay makes a good save from Jack Byrne as well. Jack Byrne was actually very good in the game until he seemed to tire later on. He's been out injured a lot, as we know, but he was very good. For the first half, particularly everything went through. Second half, I think Drotter were much the better side. They came out with real intent, gotten Rovers' faces, like, you know, and the typical Drotter type performance when they're doing well, JP, as you know from playing Berry as well, when they get on top of you. They do, don't they? They really get into your faces and press and mark you yeah. everywhere. And, you know, uh, Williams, for such a small man, I have to say, held the ball up brilliantly against a very strong Rovers defence. You know, you're like Terry in particular, who is more on, and Grace and players like that. Extra time, first half felt inevitable, like it's going to go to penalties, but Rovers up the ante, brought, made a few subs, like of Amaku, Justin Farage, I think, I don't know how to pronounce that yet, someone might be able to tell me, but uh, <laughs> he came on as well, and he made a big difference as well, and uh, just the extra quality legs um, really made the difference in extra time, Lions getting the winner, but Rovers would be delighted. In the end, to get out of jail, JP, to be honest, when... They should have been at least two, at least two up at half time, but they'd be just delighted to get into the hat into the next round and draw the great effort. A little disappointing for them, but ultimately, you know, they weren't expected. Let's say to get a result. No, I guess this is the one game where, if you were looking at an upset, you could have been potentially looking at, at Drogheda winning this because of yeah. Rovers coming off the back of a European Thursday night. So. Yeah. Um, Rovers got the start that exactly what I wanted an early goal um, as you say they had a, f- a few chances in the first half they, they put the game beyond bed and they didn't do that and as we know um, throughout the, the Premier Division season is that if you don't kill Drogheda off um, they, they grow in confidence because they tend to go on the, a spell of 10 or 15 minutes where they will really get at you and not let you settle and if you haven't killed, killed them off by that stage um, they're very much in the game and um, they, they got back in there through Dean Williams and we know what, what he's like in, in the box. Um, it, it comes alive and whenever it's going the extra time, you're just wondering, do, will Rovers tire? Will Thursday night start to become a, a problem for them? Obviously not, because we have said that if there's one team in the league that, that can deal with, with a, a game every three days, um, it, it is Shamrock Rovers uh, and the, the subs and then um, you don't have to look at the subs an extra time like to take room bring room and Finn on for, for Gaffney like so um, th- that's the quality that they've gotten um, uh, Richie Tyle as well is on the bench and look they're they're in the Europa League but they'll, they'll certainly want to win this competition as well because this is the competition that has I think when they won it in penalties against Dundalk, that has spearheaded their their assault to the top of Irish football. Yeah, absolutely. Look, guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming on. Guys at home, subscribe, hit your bell notification button, and thanks for watching as usual. Cheers.